Can someone please tell me what the f*** is going on? Because I started dating again. I got stood up by a man that told me an hour before we were due to meet that he wasn't actually single. I've been stood up by a man that was actually trying to scam me with his girlfriend. However, I don't know what they were trying to actually get out of the situation. Then I'm out with this guy like three times and he went on holiday and then I let him know that I was going out and he accused me of being on a date and being with someone and sleeping in a hotel with someone. And then I met up with somebody's son who then told me that if I wasn't going to him, there was no point in coming. On top of all that, I've got a girl that blocked me because I didn't reply fast enough. Another girl that I've told I'm not interested but keeps on messaging like every single day, like three times, four times, five times a day. And then I've got a couple that are messaging me every day. Hi, how are you? What are you up to? How's your weekend going? In the hopes that I'm going to have a threesome with them one day. And a thousand unread messages on a swinger site. Where does that leave me? It's great to see everyone once more. Woman can't stop crying as she ruined her marriage, regretted instantly, and was left with nothing. So let's get started. Daily reminder that if you're in a relationship with someone, even if you're married, and the person is just not a good person, do not have a baby with them. For your baby's sake. Also for your sake, but mainly for your baby's sake. It's court order that every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, if my baby's with me, or if my baby's with my ex, we get a 30 minute FaceTime call. My baby's been sleeping during that time, so I have not been able to talk to her since Tuesday. Earl told me today that she's usually going to sleep at seven o'clock, which is our FaceTime call court order time, right? So I said, okay, well, I wanna talk to her before she goes to sleep. And he said, I'm following the order, which means that if my baby is asleep, that I don't get to talk to her. He has control right now and he is, he's loving it. And I only cry because it's just really sad for my baby. And he thinks that because my baby's happy and she's safe and all these things, she doesn't need me. My baby is a happy baby. She's a happy baby. She's the happiest baby actually. But he thinks that because she is happy that she doesn't need me. I don't understand that because she does need me just like she needs you just a few more weeks and then we have court and i'm getting all this in front of a judge and i can't wait i literally cannot wait the thing is this an excellent illustration of how some people refuse to accept responsibility for their own decisions is this woman who is sobbing about her divorce while sitting in her car she believed that by filing for divorce she was trying to improve her life or make a point However, she is now sitting in remorse, blaming her ex-husband rather than taking responsibility for her own conduct, after losing everything, including custody of her daughter. We've seen this narrative a million times. A person takes a quick decision, frequently motivated by passion or poor counsel, only to discover later that they made a grave error. However, it's simpler to place the blame elsewhere rather than accept accountability. In this instance, her ex-husband is used as a scapegoat for her own inability to act maturely and strategically. She is currently co-parenting, something she probably didn't want but forced upon herself, and she continues to deny her role in this result. It's difficult to accept, but occasionally the happiness or independence people believe they're pursuing when they split up, their families turns out to be an illusion. Her ex-husband, whom she attempted to leave behind, is probably moving on, and concentrating on raising their child in the meanwhile. While she is stranded in her car, wailing, he is showing up and taking care of the necessary tasks. And let's face it, unless there are some major problems, how can you lose custody of your own child? This, this is the comment. I know my standards aren't too high because I meet them. Say that again, ladies. If you're saddling, repeat this to yourself until you believe it. Like, no words. Words. Unicorns are real till you believe them, you can also tell yourself. Since none of you are willing to clarify your standards, that does not imply that it is true. I'll give you a dumb example. I prefer to prepare a relatively gourmet supper from scratch for myself every other Sunday. I could still be normal in my mind, or I could expect someone else to accomplish it for me because I allowed them into my life. 
and don't assume that just because I exist, everyone else will alter their entire way of living. I just showed up at my parents' house because my baby's there. I want to see my baby because I haven't seen my baby in days. And I'm being told that I'm not going to see my baby. So I showed up at my parents' house, knock on the door. My dad answers the door with his arms crossed. He hasn't seen me in six months. He hasn't talked to me in six months. He said, can I help you? Not like that, hold on, not like that. Hold on, I gotta show you how he did this. Because it's definitely part of it. Can I help you? I'm like, yeah, is my baby here? You need to leave, you are not allowed to be here. I'm like, I'm here to see my baby. I'm not here to see you, I'm here to see my baby. Amber, you need to go get help. You need to take care of your mental illness. Also, he's like real close to me. He's like, like, trying to like fucking scare me. Which it doesn't scare me. It just makes me sad that my dad is trying to scare me. And that my dad is against me. It makes me sad. Long story short, I did not see my baby. I lost my shit. It's like screaming at the top of my lungs. As if there was like a death or something. I have no regrets. I am losing my motherfucking mind. I'm doing everything I possibly can. I can only do so much because I don't have money just flowing out of my ass. I swear on my life that I will not fucking stop until I get justice for all of this. This is not fair, not just to me, but also to my baby. My baby needs me, my baby wants me, my baby loves me, and there's nothing that you can ever do to take that from her or me. I promise you there's not. The thing is this, you've already shown where your priorities are when you put marijuana or any other self-destructive habit ahead of your own child. To be honest, it sounds just like her father. The grandfather took charge and protected his grandchild in the way that any true guy would. He deserves praise for prioritizing the child's welfare when the mother obviously wouldn't. Let's be honest. Accepting your obligations as an adult, particularly with regard to your children, is a sign of maturity. However, she has repeatedly shown that she is unwilling to assist herself. Asking for support while you're struggling is one thing. Ignoring that assistance and carrying on with self-centered decisions is another. The people who are closest to you eventually become weary of seeing you go downhill and intervene. For the defenseless kid in the middle, not for you. I can tell her dad has had enough of her antics because he is taking charge. He has probably been aware of the warning signs for years, has attempted to mentor and encourage her, and has ultimately come to the conclusion that taking matters into his own hands is the best way to secure his granddaughter's future. Furthermore, it should be remembered that children do not request to be born. They are worthy of affection, security, and parents who will always prioritize them. She is not an adolescent. She is an adult. If she doesn't care enough about herself to get it together, then it's okay to figure things out now. However, avoid bringing your child down with you. The boundary is drawn there. I was a little surprised when he took me up on it, but I... I got my wallet out, I brought it, I brought my card. You just don't see it very often where I offer to pay for half of the dinner or drinks and then he takes me up on it. The whole finance part of dating is probably one of the most confusing parts for me and the part that gives me the most anxiety. It is a little bit unfair of me to offer to pay half of the bill, but then when the guy takes me up on it, I don't talk to him again. It is a bit of a red flag if a guy doesn't pay for the first date do you expect it on the first date and if you don't do it i'm not gonna talk to you again when you're on a date and the check comes do you offer to pay as it happens you do and that in my opinion is the indication that i will never see you again so you don't have to be concerned that i'll accept your offer to pay and leave you since we were finished it will take a very poor day for me to agree to you paying half the amount after you offer to pay so you might want to think about it if you're my soon-to-be ex-husband, this is only for you. Hey, I'm just wondering, what the fuck is your problem? If you're too scared to comment or if you're, you know, for legal reasons, you're not able to comment, have one of your friends or something comment because I actually cannot wrap my fucking head around it. The only thing that seems rational to me is just to hurt me. And you're doing a good job at it. You're trying really hard to knock me down and you do knock me down most days, but I always get right the fuck back up. None of this would be happen happening right now if I wouldn't have left you. I would be at home with my baby right now in your home, but I would be fucking miserable. Would I rather have my baby and be miserable? Honestly, I do think about it. It will be the best day of my life when I get my baby back. 
And no matter what, I would never teach her hate. No matter how much I fucking hate you, I will never teach her to hate. She'll figure it out on her own. Love isn't about all the materialistic things that you think it is. You're so emotionally unavailable, it's not even funny. I tried so hard, so hard to bring your heart out of you because I did see goodness in you. I thank you for teaching me a really hard lesson, but you taught me to never, ever, ever try to fix someone again. The next person that I'm with, going to bring peace into my life did you get the email saying that divorce will be final december 5th that's a really long time but i actually am really excited because 2025 i'll be able to start a new year without you and it's going to be the best fucking year of my life just got to find a positive in everything you know life is about making decisions and each one has repercussions after making her bed she must now lie in it you cannot continue to make careless self-centered decisions and then hope for pity when everything falls apart. Life isn't like that. People must eventually accept responsibility for their own errors and cease pointing the finger at others. She put short-term thrills ahead of her obligations and her own child, and now she's paying the price. It's harsh, but that's the way things are. Bad decisions don't get you a pass in life. It incentivizes work, growth, and accountability. She had chances to change her situation, support from her family, and encouragement to get back on track. However, she tossed it aside. She's currently sitting in the mess she made. This is more than a case of learning a lesson. This is the outcome of consistently disregarding the important things. And to be honest, perhaps she needs this rough love to reach her lowest point and accept some accountability at last. The individuals who genuinely care for the child are taking care of the child in the interim. You get what you sow in the end. Although it's difficult to accept, this is the reality. Guys, that's it for today. Please like and subscribe this video if you want to see more like it. Thank you for reading and have a great day.